Good evening fellow zoners and welcome to the painting zone. Today we're going to have a look at Games Workshop's White Dwarf issue number 165. Um, have a little look at the cover here. We see this marvellous old piece of artwork featuring the original and best Tyranids. I think this one on the side here is supposed to be a hunter killer. Um, it looks a lot like the original Geiger alien. I assume they are fighting over a Eldar craft world. And you can see these Tyranid ships in the background, which look a lot like Nautilus. Those bizarre things that swim in the sea. They're like a snail with an octopus's face. Anyway, opening up, this is issue 165 from September 1993. Um, on the left here we have an awesome old epic picture featuring a warlord titan, Legio Metallica, I believe, and the original Stormblade models which look fantastic with those missiles down the side, and Stormhammers, the best tank based on a Baneblade chassis ever. Anyway, let's open it up. Okay, so we uh, have an advert for some self-adhesive banners here, because I guess this is the days when they're getting away from painting your own. An advert for Games Day 1993. Tickets only five pounds. Some more adverts over here for Man of War and free Citadel miniatures. On the cover of next month's White Dwarf, we're giving away a free Space Marine. I don't know if any of you out there still have your free Space Marine, but I believe these are the Marines that came in the original second edition box set. Um, the Shadow Blades. Shadow Blades? I thought they were Storm Blades. Storm Blade here. Shadow Blade here. What is going on? <laughs> anyway, the Shadow Blades have come out a price of £12 for three. And there's also a new edition, a new 40k box edition, which we know about. Um, the advert we've seen many, many times featuring these very excited children here. And this October sees the releases of what must be the most eagerly awaited game ever. Is that a typo? Sees the releases of what must be the most eagerly awaited game ever, a completely new Warhammer 40,000. Um, this is when second edition was just about to be released. Um, here's the original cover artwork and a marvelous picture of the Ultramarines here. This one has a Medusa head. Is that Sons of Medusa? chapter logo there I don't know tells you about the new game what rules changes there will be a new leadership phase new turn sequence we have this awesome piece of um, diorama work down the bottom featuring the blood angels the awesome old orange blood angels versus the orcs with that out of produ production out of print battle wagon they need to bring that back that was brilliant um, a picture I think the stairs leading up to the Eternity Gate, or is this before the Golden Throne? Anyway, I always remember thinking that would take a long time to walk up those stairs. And I remember people saying that these things were supposed to be Titans. But they really don't look like it. Maybe it's all those sinister. Some more awesome pieces of art. I assume these were all commissioned to tie in with the release of the new edition of 40k and um, these Nurgle pieces here look fantastic. Here's an advert for some blood claws. These were good back in the day. Everyone played Space Wolves and I think since these days they still do. Um, take note here the old Warhammer 40k logo was better than the current one but not quite as good as the original Rogue Trader logo. They always seem to get worse every time they update that. Why? Uh, some rules for Man o War featuring the Hellhammer and the Iron Fist. There's the Hellhammer there, looks like a giant cannon on a ship. Um, advert for Plague Fleet. 
I don't know if anyone ever played Man O' War. I certainly didn't. I didn't even have any of the minis. I don't remember it being around for that long, to be honest. And the Iron Fist there appears to be a giant mortar on a ship. Plague Fleet was an expansion for Man O' War featuring more cardboard than you could ever imagine by the look of things with no minis. Some fluff here, maybe one day we'll have a read through that and your templates or whatever you would call these, your play cards for your Hellhammer and Iron Fist. New stores opening up, opening up. Kingston upon Thames, Bournemouth and Aberdeen. Are they still there? You tell me. Ah, one of my favourite old miniatures, the Skaven Screaming Bell. Um, something that you may have if you had a bad infection. Um, <laughs> however, this was a brilliant mini back in the day. I really do remember thinking, being metal, that thing was going to be an absolute pain in the behind to put together. Uh, there's a lovely piece of artwork there showing it off. Warhammer Army's Dwarves. I don't know what edition of Warhammer Fantasy Battle that this is from. I'm sure someone out there will tell me. And here we have the rules for the new Imperial Stormblade, which they thought they might call the Shadow Blade over here. Um, yeah, it's called the Stormblade in the magazine. So that's that's uh, consistent at least with the original pictures. I think still this looks absolutely fantastic. I don't know how that missile reloads. Do the crew have to get out and load it themselves? I don't know. Double page spread here. Centerfold for the old Space Marine game, also known as Epic later on. Um, this had hundreds of min. I think this might have been my first box set actually. God knows what I did with it. I remember painting these rhinos as dark angels and blood drinkers of all things. Blood drinkers, whatever happened to them? Um, your company cards for your new Stormblade models. If you would like to play them in the game. Uh, blue was for Imperial Guard, I remember. An advert for the Space Marine Battles compilation, which features articles from White Dwarf collected into one book there. Advert for the Bane Lord. When are we going to see the Bane Lord in Adeptus Titanicus? I would like to know. Yet another advert for Warhammer Fantasy, this time it's Orcs and Goblins. And here we are going into another Man of War piece, it's Sea of Blood. The second supplement after Plague Fleet, I assume. And this one had rules for all these, the little um, extra units you would have in the game. I always remember thinking these look absolutely awesome minis to paint. Always had a fascination with that shark and that dwarf gyrocopter. I don't know why. Looking at it now, um, I quite like the Kraken maybe, but the artwork is good anyway. And a double page spread again, not the centerfold this time. I never played this game, I don't know if I mentioned that earlier, I think I did. But if anyone did, please let me know how good it was. Um, maybe one day we'll see a re-release of this. We had Dreadfleet, but um, that was just a one-off game. A load of vouchers for the Bolton Grand Opening. Whatever happened to these vouchers? They were brilliant things to get in your uh, magazines. Always very handy. I remember spending a few of those in the local Norwich store back in the day. We're not on the map though. Don't know why. Uh, another grand opening for Maidenhead. And then we're into Grom the Paunch of Misty Mountain. A mighty hero for goblins and dwarfs. And he is a rotund Goblin! <laughs> Still, we see Squigs make an appearance from back in the day. Squigs always were amazing. This piece of artwork is literally a ball with claws. <laughs> Fantastic. 
Dwarf War Machines, always some of my favourite fantasy pieces. Again, these were probably all metal. That thing looks really heavy, and that thing looks fiddly. It's literally just a wooden chair with a um, small cannon on the front and a rotor on the top. A bit like the gyro captain from Mad Max. Uh, and here we have some dwarf characters. King Kazador of Karak Azul and Ungrim Iron Fist, the Slayer King of Karak Kadrim. I think Ungrim Iron Fist is still a thing. I'm sure I remember that name. Some Chaos Dwarf heroes and some dwarf characters. The uh, Ungrim Iron Fist's dragon cloak reminds me a lot of a salamander's mantle, perhaps, from, um, what is his name? The Primarch of the Salamanders. Not Drake. What is his name? I can't remember what his name is. Uh, Vulcan. That's it. The Bugman's Brewers. Joseph Bugman. I think you can still get a, a one-off model, a special limited edition piece from Warhammer World Bugman's Bar. Get your own Bugman's nowadays. I never did pop in and get one of those. The Dragon Princes of Calador. Fantastic models. Always remind me of Deathwing Terminators. I think it's the colours there. The Chaos Dwarf Earthshaker. It's absolutely fantastic. I'm going to assume that's metal again. Look at those guys carrying that shell on a stretcher. Um, and here is an excerpt from the Space Marine novel by Ian Watson. One of the first um, books that came out from what I remember based on Space Marines. I think if you read this nowadays it may be quite weird but the artwork for this is fantastic. A lot of these I think were used in advanced advanced, advanced Space Crusade and uh, Tyranid Attack. Yet more Space Wolves, this time it's the Wolfguard Terminators. And here we are into the catalogue section Always nice to see how much things cost. Uh, Warhammer 40,000 doesn't say how much the box set is. is on the other side? No, okay, so they must have just discontinued Rogue Trader. Now you can't buy second edition. But Space Marine, however, the epic set was 30 pounds. And here are the metal pieces of the box set box set of the various box sets we've seen. These were fantastic. Marauder miniatures here, just before they got consolidated into Citadel uh, themselves. All the various squigs from back in the day. This one always amused me. Various Imperial Guard tanks from Epic. Again, the best one, Stormhammer. And the Death Strike. This Death Strike here looked fantastic. Always reminded me of the V1 Doodlebugs from the Second World War. And uh, I did not know that these Man o War minis were metal. It's very interesting. I always thought they'd be plastic, but metal does make sense given the time period. An Imperial Great Ship and some more Man o War ships, along with the Black Ark of Nagaroth. Um, there's a paint named after that, Nagaroth Knight. The dwarf ships, the best ships, and that's not a dwarf warship, is it? It's a dark elf death fortress. They ride on the back of dragons. And to cap it all off, we have the Blood Angels versus the Orcs once again in this marvellous old piece of scenery. I think there was a white dwarf that told you how to build a bunker like one of these. I'll see if I can dig it out. Thanks for watching, and always remember to drill your barrels. Goodbye.